Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch, Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. Today's show is a sports-oriented show. Um, I had done a Florida Gators watch a few months ago, just before Christmas, because it was a Christmas present, along with a, a minimalist wallet, Florida Gators minimalist wallet. Well, today, I'm going to be showcasing this past week what I had done was made handmade a green Cremexel Michigan State themed strap for my Michigan State watch. And there's so many different kind of team watches that are available out there. And it's just a really kind of fun, cool thing to have your own personalized, unique handmade strap. I'm not here to promote me making one for you. There's a lot of people, you can make one yourself. You know, maybe some of you are actually starting to get into leather crafting, which would be really cool. It's a very relaxing, stress relieving hobby. And uh, if any of you are thinking about doing it, reach out to me. I'll try and help you out, put you in the right direction of some starter tools to get. Maybe, maybe one of these days I'll do a show on that. So, but I'm also, what I'm gonna be doing is sharing with you guys my all-time sports hero um, started when I was at age 11, and I'm not going to give it away yet. I want you to watch this show because this man is so important to me in my life that um, it just changed the whole course of my life. And not many of us really even get to meet our childhood, you know, sports heroes of life. Well, I did, and I'm going to share that story with you. So stick around after the intro, we're gonna get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Strap A Watch. And thank you to all of my newer subscribers and boy, Ocean O'Malley of the Timeless Watch channel. He had put me on a playlist on his channel. And wow, thank you so much, Ocean. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly now. I, I had never heard that name before. So, uh, you know, us wacky Americans, man, you know. So here I am, uh, you know, getting ready and, and cutting out the leather and, and getting everything ready to make this strap. You're going to be seeing me, like I said, hand make this strap for my Michigan State watch. I had gone to Western Michigan, Michigan State, and Trinity College of Florida, uh, which is where Billy Graham, Reverend Billy Graham, had graduated back in 1940 from Trinity College of Florida. And if you're not familiar with Billy Graham, please Google him. He is the foremost evangelist of the last hundred years. I mean, he, he just passed away two years ago at the age of 99, and he was referred to as the president's preacher. He was always um, at one point or another with all of the different presidents while he was, he was alive. So, okay, the suspense. Uh, who is my favorite favorite hero of sports that changed my life well it happened when in 1976 I'm 11 years old and I was watching the British Open Golf Championship the Open Championship and this dashing young Spaniard I'm giving it away some of you are gonna know right away uh, took second place he was 17 years old and uh, from that day on, I was a huge Seve fan. Yes, Seve Ballesteros, Severiano Ballesteros, out of Pedrania, Spain. And uh, unfortunately, we lost Seve to uh, brain uh, brain cancer. And um, you know, for for so long uh, prior to him passing, and, and uh, he 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 was really playing poorly and you know none of us knew why of course he didn't know why it was it was uh, devastating to him he just you know he was not the same player well here nobody knew he didn't know he, he had brain cancer and for how long we we don't know but he ended up collapsing one day and, and was rushed in and that's how they found it 
and they operated to take out a tumor in his brain and and I can relate because I had been diagnosed and had a brain tumor myself uh, back in 1999 2000 that's what ended up bringing me to Florida in the first place was I went through some very early proton treatment it was called a Linux scalpel uh, through Shands Hospital, the University of Florida, and the McKnight Brain Institute basically saved my life with proton treatment and killed the tumor. So uh, he, he lost his battle. But uh, so here is the infamous clip of Sevy. It's for three. And he's just on his oh, 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 oh. I tell you, man, just just seeing him right there. That's that's the iconic, iconic image of Seve from the 1984 Open Championship, the British Open. And um, so the story of me meeting Seve, uh, what had happened, you know, after after that tournament in 1976 the very next year british open was what was called the duel in the sun between jack nicholas and tom watson and, and if you know you're not a golfer i apologize but for all the golfers out there if you know anything about golf and a little bit of golf history you're going to know what i'm talking about the duel in the sun it was basically a match play event between jack and and tom watson and uh, just shot for shot, and Watson actually edged out Jack Nicholas and won that British Open. So those two years back to back, seventy six and seventy seven, were just uh, amazing. And here I'm, eleven, twelve years old, and that's when I started playing. My father had passed away in a car accident when I was nine years old. He had cut down a set of Patty Berg ladies clubs uh, for me when I was five six years old and had been teaching me the fundamentals of golf he was a very good amateur golfer in Southern California at the time we were living in Southern California and the thing was he was a member of, of Mission Hills Country Club and he was kind of old-fashioned about kids playing on the course and you know and he told me, you know, you're not going to be out on the course till you're 10, and I know you can play, keep up, and, you know, you understand the whole etiquette of the game and all of that. And uh, so, unfortunately, I never did get to play golf with my father. Um, and, and so, you know, growing up single-parent mom, uh, it was it was tough. I mean, it was a tough, tough time. And, you know, Seve was just this inspiration to me, how young he was, and if he could do it, I could do it. And so I had a whole wall. <laughs> I was one of these weird kids in my bedroom of Seve, you know, cutouts from Golf Digest and Golf Magazine and, and anything I could get my hands on that was Seve. Um, he, he was just my idol. And uh, I ended up... When I was 12 years old, I got a job at uh, Grand Haven Golf Club. We had moved from California back to Michigan in Grand Haven, Michigan, a little beach town on Lake Michigan on the western edge uh, side of Michigan. Many, many people think if you're from Michigan, you're from Detroit. No, that's not true. Um, there's a whole rest of the state, and it, Grand Haven is a beautiful little town. Um, so I got a job, Grand Haven Golf Club, and uh, you know I was cleaning clubs, shining shoes, cleaning the men's locker room, washing the window, so I could play for free and hit as many golf balls on the driving range as I wanted. And uh, that became, you know, an obsession. I would ride my bicycle out there before the sun rose, and I would ride home again at night. And it was about five miles away, so five miles there, five miles back, and. and and uh, that, that f filled my summers, a lot of my summertime as a kid growing up. And, uh, you know, I, I became a, a, a pretty darn good golfer by the time I was 16, 17 years old. And, uh, you know, I was kind of on my way. I, I really 
had all these aspirations. Unfortunately for me, I was in a motorcycle accident where I had broke my arm, my right arm, and the bone came out and cut what's called the, my radial medial sensory nerve. So when they had set my arm, they didn't know about this, and unfortunately what happened is the nerve was never attached, reattached. I have no feeling in the palm of my hand, the whole underside of my right forearm into my palm of my hand I have zero feeling I can feel the the top side my fingertips thank God but the whole underside is, is just gone so you know that was the end really of my playing career as a golfer and uh, you know I ended up getting a job on, on at, back at Grand Haven Golf Club uh, later on in, in my early 20s and uh, I, I worked out there for seven years. They had put me through a lot of educational courses that were sponsored through Michigan State Extension. And uh, later, with my first wife, we had moved to Traverse City, Michigan. I was an assistant superintendent of a course. Again, further education. I was an assistant superintendent at another course that I helped. Uh, build and so I got into the whole world of golf as a profession for years and then when I ended up moving down south and after having gone through all of these treatments for my brain tumor I ended up becoming a professional golf caddy and even caddied on a number of PGA Tour events, Champions Tours events and this is how I ended up in 2004 Meeting my childhood idol, Severiano Ballesteros. Sevi. You know, just there's so few people that are known by their just one name. Sevi is one of them. You know, even like Jack Nicholas. You say Jack, <clears throat> unfortunately, most people are going to think of Jack Nicholson. But in the world of golf, all you have to do is say Jack and they know who you're talking about. But there's only one Sevi, man. So, anyways, 2004. It, uh, you know, down here in the Florida Swing in Bay Hill, I was caddying out of a club in Tampa called Old Memorial. And I went to the Bay Hill event because I heard Seve was going to be there. He had a special uh, invite. And I bet it was through Arnold Palmer, Mr. Palmer himself. But it was an, a special exemption invite. And the thing was, he never did start, so I never saw him. I was just there for day one on Thursday, and I knew I wasn't going to be caddying out there that day. Um, I, you know, it's no calls or anything at that time. I had basically kind of been uh, outed from <laughs> tour events by that time for for unspeakable reasons, but. Um, the very next week was uh, the Ford Championship, which was down at Doral, the, uh, the Blue Monster down at Doral. And I knew he was going to also be playing at Doral. So it's about a five-hour drive from the Tampa area where I was living at the time down to Miami. And, uh, you know, I, I drove down there. And what had happened was I got a call because I had caddied out there before. I caddied at a number of courses all over, from Whistling Straits to Hudson National and, and Pine Valley and, uh, you know, uh, Sea Island Golf Club, uh, TPC of Sawgrass, you know, a lot of clubs, a lot of clubs all over the country. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of professional events. Well, I had gotten a call from one of my former caddy masters that Esteban Toledo's caddy was sick and he was going to be needing another caddy and he had given him my name. So that's why I drove down. I drove down on Wednesday morning in the dark. So I left at like 3 in the morning. I didn't know at the time the guy was going to be teeing off or anything. So I just I got down there as early as possible and I found uh, this this caddy master who had gotten me a caddy pass so I could get into the grounds no charge and what I did you know there's a lot of security riding around on on golf carts and what have you 
And you're not supposed to be hanging out where the pros park in any way. All right. That's kind of how I had gotten my Rolex uh, watch stolen that I had. Um, <laughs> and, and that's a story I've shared about it before. But I was in a, a parking lot on, at a, at a event at a golf course um, and got my watch stolen so you can listen to that episode I think it was in the second episode I ever did second or third episode but so what I what I was doing was kind of hiding out in a little spot where I found where I could sit and have a vantage point of any of the pros driving in with their big rental Ford you know expedition kind of vehicles that they had that week for Esteban Toledo. And Esteban's out of Mexico. He's from Mexi- Mexicali, Mexico. He's a couple years older than me and super talented golfer. I mean, he's never been like on the big, big, big time, but he's won a ton of events all over the world. So anyways, you know, after hours and hours of sitting there, finally I see him pulling in. And so I get up and he's driving down because there's no parking spots. He's he's having to look for a parking spot. And I'm running behind his <laughs> truck. <laughs> and he he can his rear view mirror. You know, finally he finds a spot and he parks. And he doesn't know what to think of me, you know, at first. So he opens his door uh, cautiously. And he's, he's kind of looking at me out of the side corner of his eye. And I said, oh, no, no, I'm a caddy. I'm, I'm here to get your golf clubs. And he's like, oh. And I, sh- I showed him my, my caddy pass. So he gets out, gets his clubs, and I just start, you know, taking his clubs. And I said, listen, I know your caddy's sick. Um, I'd, I'd love to caddy for you for the day if that's okay. And if, if he's not better, I'd, I'd, I'd caddy for you for the tournament. And he said, oh, no, yeah, he's real sick. And I said, okay, well, um, I'd love to caddy for you, you know. And I'm, you know, I've am i caddied out here a number of times. I know the course like the back of my hand. And he goes, Were you, you've you been waiting for me all morning? I said, yeah. And he said, okay, you got the job. If you you know that dedicated, you got the job. That's how I got the job. And long story short was, he had gone into the clubhouse to get his shoes and everything on and, and get his locker. And and when he came out, I was kind of hanging out by the door, the exit door. He um, he wanted to go hit ball, so he went up to the driving range. And lo and behold, there's Seve Ballesteros looking at a monitor um, with Jim McLean. He was a swing coach, and he was out of Doral, and they were checking out Seve's swing. Well, Seve sees... Esteban Toledo and comes over to shake his hand and um, subsequently he shakes my hand and I tell Seve, I said, listen, you're my all-time hero of my life. You know, I got into the whole golf world because of you since I was 11, since 1976 and I'm shaking his hand and he hugs me. And I'll never forget that feeling of putting my hand on Seve's back. I can still feel it to this day and his hand in my hand. Truly amazing. So it's an amazing ride, amazing story, and, you know, it's something I will never forget as long as I live. And unfortunately, like I said, we lost him way too, too young. So here's a final product. You can see how uh, beautiful this, this watch turned out. Again, thank you to all my new subscribers, and thank you guys for, for watching If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. God bless you all, and until next time, keep on ticking.